launch of AMD's next generation 7 nanometer Navi architecture in 2019, we've seen a whole host of awesome AMD graphics cards added to their stack. The mainstream RS 5500 launched just before Christmas and now the 5600 XT in January 2020. So in order to help you navigate your way through and choose the best AMD GPU for your usage, we've put together this video. AMD are a key supplier of graphics cards and they offer something at all price points, but they're not always that easy to navigate by name alone, as there can often be multiple generations available at the same time. So if you're struggling to get to grips with what's what and which card might be right for you, well, we've done the hard work for you. So sit back, grab a brew and listen up as I give you an overview of which cards are available currently and when you might select each. Naturally, the faster and more powerful graphics cards will allow you to run your favourite games at higher quality settings and achieve a smooth frame rate, resulting in an overall better gaming experience. But at the same time, they will of course also be more expensive, so balancing the cost versus performance will be up to you, the buyer. Now, for AMD GPUs, some of the key specs you might want to look at when choosing your graphics card are the number of stream processors, including the speed that they run at and the amount of memory. Generally speaking, you'll find that the more powerful cards have more of everything. AMD also now add in a game clock speed. Unlike the boost clock, which tells you the peak speed your GPU might hit for short periods, this is designed to be a realistic figure of what you should consistently achieve in a gaming scenario. We'll quote AMD's numbers for these for each card based on the reference design, but do please bear in mind that this one could vary from model to model when you look at the different brands, as they may add in exotic cooling solutions or more aggressive overclocks, which will then sustain a higher game clock. It's a good way to tell what you're going to get from a particular model, so be sure to check that out when you're on the SCAN website comparing your next purchase. The current top of the range AMD GPUs launched in July 2019 and are found within the Radeon RX 5000 range. These Navi graphics cards are based on their RDNA architecture, which includes new anti-lag and image sharpening technology with a focus on raw performance and power efficiency and they offer native support for the speedy PCIe 4.0 interface. The flagship AMD GPU is the Radeon RS 5700 XT, a high-end GPU, with 8GB of advanced GDDR6 memory and 2560 stream processors, enabling 1440p performance for even the most demanding of games. It has 40 compute units and up to 1,755 MHz gain boost. Next, the RX 5700 is a perfect GPU for handling high resolution workloads. It has less stream processors than the 5700 XT at 2,304 and four less compute units at 36, but it sticks with the same 8GB of GDDR6 memory, so it's perfectly capable of delivering stunning 1440p gaming at ultra or max settings and it offers up to 1,625 MHz game boost. Next is the RX 5600 XT mid-range GPU launched in January 2020, providing the ultimate 1080p gaming performance. It also has 2,304 stream processors and 36 compute units like the RX 5700, but it drops the memory slightly to 6GB of GDDR6, and it has a lower game clock than the RX 5700 at 1,375 MHz. Then we move on to the RX 5500 XT mainstream GPUs, which are a good choice for 1080p gaming with up to 60 frames per second and esports gaming with up to 90 frames per second. The 5500 XT has 1,408 stream processors and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory with 22 compute units and a game boost of up to 1,717 megahertz. So that's the current RX 5000 cards summarised as they stand right now in January 2020, but you can still get hold of some of AMD's previous generation cards too. These are the Radeon 7, Vega 64 and 56 and the RX 500 series GPUs. They're now end of life, but depending on the deals that are available, they could offer very good performance for the price. 
Rather than go through each model individually, we've added them into our summary table in order of relative performance in games. This way you can see how they stack up versus the new models and decide based on the prices available at the time if one of them is worth it for you. this buyer's guide helpful but of course if you do still have any more questions on which to go for based on your budget and needs post them below or get in touch and of course don't forget to like and subscribe